Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Ondiavari Presents, the series where I bring you the creepiest real-life stories and locations from around the world. Before we begin, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you never miss a future episode. If you enjoy this episode, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Now sit back, turn off the lights, and let's begin. Tonight, we look at different types of fear and how people react in certain situations. Enjoy. Number one, I'm on mobile and formatting might suffer. Number two, I apologize if I use the wrong flare. I'm seeking for advice. Number three, I browse Reddit a lot and my few posts were comments to other posts, so if I'm breaking any rules, yell at me to fix. Context. I am in my 30s. I don't suffer from any mental issues, or at least I have none diagnosed. I'm not afraid of being alone. I don't have any religious beliefs. I consider myself a pretty sane person. I know that in this sub there are many made-up stories, some painfully obvious as I have seen, but I am sure there are also legit people. In the last year, I keep seeing things. Shadows moving. Knocks on furniture. As in a human would knock hard enough to make the cupboard door move a little. Or that box sitting there just jolted a little as if someone kicked it lightly with their foot. And the list can go on. The shadows moving are only seen by me. Knocks and moving objects have witnesses. I am not scared. These episodes do not scare me but they do leave the feeling that there is something more to it than my imagination. Also, I do know and I am very aware of the times when I just imagine things like a light just reflected from something. I scare myself while reading stories from this sub at 3am, but these episodes do not scare me. Regarding the place I am living in, belonged to only one family before me. All members of the family died in the house. Some other members of their own families. Some deaths were peaceful. Some I heard more troubled. From what I understood, the old couple living here with a house with many rooms. If they had an older family member, like their parents, to be close to their deathbed, they would bring them here and cater to them to make their last days as comfortable as they could. At this point, I am pretty sure that whatever is here wants my attention particularly since I am the targeted one, but I don't know what should I do or how to proceed to even understand what I am dealing with. What am I supposed to do? Call out in the middle of the night to knock once if you want to kill me, or knock twice if you want to help me? Before you answer that, I've tried and nothing happened, obviously. I am confused and curious, and I am seeking for any advice or suggestions or anything as long as you don't tell me to use expensive stuff, holidays are coming and I need to budget properly. Many thanks to anyone who takes the time to read or write. Every bit will be appreciated. Not being afraid of what is described tells me that whatever it is, it isn't hostile. There are many things it could be, or it could even be a combination of things. I'll leave it to you guys to decide. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Growing up, I had a plethora of paranormal experiences. Some stuck out more than others in my memory, and this particular instance is one of them. I was riding home from school in my grandmother's car, her at the wheel and me in the passenger seat. There weren't many other cars on the road, which was nothing unusual for the town, as it was a small town, the kind where everyone knew everyone else, where gossip travels quickly because there is little more to do. I was staring out the window, watching the clothes shops in the main part of town pass by, when a person on the sidewalk caught my attention. An ominous feeling settled over me, and my heart sped up as I locked onto the being. There was nothing remarkable about the clothes it was wearing, aside from them being a little dirty. Even that wasn't too strange, as so many families in my neck of the woods of Virginia own and work farmland. 
What was out of the norm, however, was the person's face. Or what should have been a face. It was blurred. Like the censors put over faces in order to protect their identities in television shows. And it was facing towards me. Looking at me? I felt it stare straight down to my bones, and I remember turning away from the window after attempting to shield my face with my hair, though I knew it was still watching. I tried to put it out of my mind for the rest of the day, busying myself with homework and crafting. By morning, I had calmed myself down and was looking forward to school. On my way back home from school that afternoon, we were passing under a bridge that's a street away from my home. Someone was walking on the side of the road in a heavy blue winter coat out of season for the weather. As we drove by him, I turned to look back and his face was blurred. Just like the person's from the day before. It's been 21 years and I still am not sure what I was saying. Has anyone else had similar experience or any idea of what it could have been? TLDR, when I was a kid, I saw two people on two different days with blurry faces, similar to what censored faces in TV shows look like. WTF could it have been? There were many comments on this post about prosopagnosia, a mental illness where you can't recognize faces, not even your own. However, this would apply to all faces and not just a couple of random ones. My first post here. Hi. Bit of a long one, but genuinely frightened me. So I got the bus to my local Asda, UK Walmart, which is just off the bus route. As I get on, I ask for a ticket to Asda, so anyone who cared to listen knew where I was going. I sit at the front in the designated push car stroller area as I have my four month old son with me. I get him out of his seat and sit him on my lap for the journey. There is a teenage boy, approximately 18, on the bus, and there's a college about six stops after Asda. He waited for the elderly lady who was sat next to me to go, then he sits directly next to me and doesn't say anything. I picked up at this point, he was some kind of special ed. The college has classes for disabled kids. He starts trying to hold hands, tickle my son, which I keep an eye on, but allow gentle interaction as he likes the baby. I missed my stop because I was watching him. When I got up, he jumped up too and followed me off the bus. I was a bit spooked and asked him where he was going. He said, Asda, to meet his friend. I said, oh, you missed the stop? And he had no answer. I asked if he was at college, but he said the college was closed. He was wearing his student leonard and when he saw me looking at it, took it off. I slowed down to let him walk ahead because he's got a big backpack that I can see he's fiddling with. My mind is jumping to him having a knife and hurting my baby. I called my husband. A bit panicked, like, WTF do I do? It's a five minute walk to Asda. The kid is slowly walking ahead, but keeps turning around and checking where I am. Like, every 20 seconds he turns around. I get into Asda without incident. He's lingering in the lobby area. No friend is there. He pretended to call them en route, but he never dialed anyone. I stopped and spoke to security, who advised me to call 999 if he approached me again. I stayed with security until he disappeared into the crowd, then made my way to the women's clothing section for a while. I expected him to be outside when I left, but I never saw him again. I genuinely have no idea if he was trying to be friendly, was fascinated with babies, or was being weird. I've been in similar situations alone before, But having a small child with you makes you so much more vulnerable. This was my first experience of that. I'm so glad it didn't go the other way. Was this simply a case of a handicapped young man looking to make friends? Or was it something much more sinister? In the spring of 2017, we moved to a new state. We had been in our new home for a few weeks and something about the upstairs hallway was giving me the creeps. I chalked it up to being a new house and just getting used to everything and settling in. Fast forward a couple of months. I'm home alone, sitting downstairs watching TV. I heard what sounded like heavy footsteps upstairs. 
but I thought it was just our cat messing around with something or knocking things over. I called for her to come downstairs and she came running over from the dining room downstairs. She joined me at the bottom of the stairs and started growling it and puffing up her tail. That's when a door slammed shut upstairs. I assumed we had left a fan on or something. I started to go upstairs and then slam, 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 slam. All the doors upstairs had slammed shut. Even the linen closet and the bathroom. Neither of which have fans, obviously. That's when I noped the heck out of there and waited outside, with the cat of course, until my husband came home with the kids. He rolled his eyes when I told him what happened because he's the sceptic of all sceptics when it comes to this stuff. A few days later, I am home with just the kids, four and two at the time. They're asleep and my husband is at work. I decided to head up to bed myself around 10. I started to doze off, but the TV was still on, so I got up to turn it off. As soon as I got up, I heard what sounded like someone running up the stairs. I thought maybe one of the kids had woken up and I hadn't noticed them go downstairs. Our room is the first one at the top of the stairs and our bed faces the door, so I should have seen them. Or maybe my husband came home early and I didn't hear the front door open. I peeked out into the hallway, but nothing. I went back to bed and when I looked into the hallway from my bed, I saw a large, dark shadow figure pass by our door. When I got up again though, the hallway was empty. I checked the kids' rooms and nothing was amiss in there either. I called my husband and he was, in fact, still at work. I decided to stay up until he got home. Nearly every night after that for the next couple of weeks, I'd see this same shadow standing in our doorway every night once everyone else was asleep. One night, I finally said, This is my home. And you're not welcome here. I'm not scared of you and I will not allow this negative energy. Leave now. And poof. No more shadow. No more footsteps. No more slamming doors. No more cat growling into empty spaces. Great. And then, after about a week of peace, our two-year-old son started waking up at night with these blood-curdling screams that would send me running into his room. When I'd get there... He'd be shaking like a leaf, standing in his crib, pointing to a corner of his room, telling me, scary monster, no get me, scary. I definitely thought it was nightmares, but it didn't stop. Eventually he stopped sleeping in his room at night, and then he refused to nap in there during the day, and then he refused to even set foot into his room during the day. This is when I decided to call on a neighbour who happens to be a medium, and ask her to come over. Our neighbour comes over, and first walks through the house to see what energy she can pick up on. All I told her was I felt like we had a negative spirit in the house, and I needed her help getting rid of it. She starts in our son's room, tells me she can feel that there was negative energy in there. But whatever it is, it's not in his room right then. She moves to our four-year-old daughter's room, and picks up on the spirits of an older man and a young girl. The older man tells her I know him as Papa D and that he wants me to know he's taking care of our little girl. My great grandpa was someone I was very close with but when he passed I was six. I called him Papa D. We had also miscarried earlier in the year and I had been certain the baby was a girl. So this brought a lot of peace. We've had other experiences with thinking Bubba D was around, but those are stories for another time. Finally, the medium makes it to our bedroom. She takes one step in and says she can't go any further because the man in our room won't let her. She describes him as a tall, broad-shouldered and aggressive. He does not like women and is upset that she is here. She isn't able to pick up on many details from him, but she's able to gather that Once I made it known I was not bothered by him and told him to leave, it upset him even more, so he decided to go after our son in order to upset me. We went through the house together with sage and holy water, all while repeating the Lord's Prayer. 
When we got to my room, we spent some extra time telling the spirit to leave and to never come back. The medium was confident he was gone after we finished with the sage. I went to pick up the kids from their friend's house after that, and when we came home, our son went straight into his room and started playing in there like normal. He napped in his room that day and went to bed that evening and slept the whole night through. Never had an incident of him waking up like that or saying there was a scary monster ever again. I haven't seen any more shadows, and I don't get the creeps upstairs anymore. A neighbor came back the next day just to make sure the spirit was gone, and she said the whole house felt lighter. I felt that too. To this day, my husband is still a skeptic and thinks it was all one big coincidence. And stands by his opinion that I'm nuts. But I know what I saw and what I felt, and I stand by that. It was lucky she had a medium living next door to sort that issue out quickly. I wonder why that shadow man hated women so much. If I were our poster, I'd look into the history of that house a bit more. Thank you all for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this presentation. Be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. And remember to leave a like if you enjoyed this video. You can follow me on most social media and even chat with me over at the Outcast Discord server. If you really enjoy what I do, consider supporting me on Patreon from as little as $2 a month. There are rewards, sneak peeks, and other Patreon-only exclusives. There is now official Join the Cult merch available from Teespring, so be sure to check that out too. All links are available in the description below. Thank you again, and remember, it's always scarier when it's real. Good night.